Greetings, this is Phi. So this is about where I left off on the last video for our uh, polynumbers project. And thanks to the work of Federico, uh, I've gotten to the point where now, you know, I can probably easily, you know, create as many curves as SimPy can handle, and I haven't found that limit yet. So uh, if I show you here, I've added another 100 curves to the plot. And you can see the most interesting things are happening. Um, and I will show you some of that in detail here in a moment. But I feel like, you know, somewhere around 44, I can't quite see there, 44. Uh, this was, uh, for this scale of the plot, uh, this is really revealing a lot of these uh, ghost patterns. Uh, there are so many interesting ones. Um, uh, I'm going to zoom in on some of this in a moment, but you know, I'm beginning to see uh, maybe, maybe what's a circle over here. And uh, I think you're really going to be amazed when we see the details too here, but I wanted to give you this overview. So this is my snapshots at each of the levels. And there's still a lot of, that I want to do in identifying actually the actual curve and, uh, and stuff, but this is um, you know, where I'm at right now. So let's go to, uh, I'm going to click that. And there, so this is the rendering of all 100 uh, of these curves directly inside of matplotlib. So now we can zoom in on this and take a look at some of the de details that are uh, in here. So I think one of the most interesting would be to come into this center area. Um, and it's just the most extraordinary set of patterns. Uh, you know, I there's more that I want to do. I still need to you know, push all this code up to GitHub and everything, but uh, I just felt like I wanted to record some of this and, and share some of these things because it's just extraordinarily beautiful uh, what's happening. Um, look at all these crossing uh, ghost lines. Uh, I say lines, uh, I do believe that they are all curves uh, for the most part, and so that's something to look at um, uh, here, except for uh, except for the ones that reflect this uh, this uh, diagonal. There's another one you know, here that reflects this diagonal. And I think that all of these ghost curves are a reflection of another curve, you know, somewhere. So I think that that might be something to prove here, too. It's kind of the impression that I'm getting, you know, as I'm looking at this. Uh, so this is where, you know, we have a major crossing here of many curves. Uh, and if we slide down to where we have a void, uh, we can see that there are many ghost curves that are you know, also intersecting, you know, through here uh, as well. And I think you can maybe begin to see where, you know, these have a curve to them. They're not lines. Uh, they're, maybe some of them are, but, um, you know, it's all something to, to prove. I'm uh, really looking forward to that. Uh, so the coloration here. So uh, I have a um, theme that I use for matplotlib called dark background, and it has a default color map to it. So as I've been plotting each of these curves, I haven't specified the color that I want uh, the curve to be plotted in. So matplotlib will automatically assign a color based on a color map that is default. So I still need to look up what that is. But, you know, in the, in the instances where uh, I've used it like this, you know, it's just really beautiful. So it's kind of like a collection of pastel colors. I don't know what the divisions are or how many colors there are in the map and how matplotlib is making choices around that color map but clearly that it's coming back around towards you know uh particular colors you know uh in here so there's some cycle through the 100 um plots that you know you'll see uh where there are sets of colors that are you know kind of like you know, gathering together, and this is, you know, a great example of this, this blue color. I don't know where it falls on the map uh, and such, but, you know, imagine um, one of the advantages of, uh, you know, color maps is that we can change them out, too. So we can apply a color map that shows odd and even, you know, for instance, and see how, you know, what effects does that create in the plot here, uh, uh, or other, you know, other properties of, uh, of each of the curves, uh, for instance, but look at this. This is just incredible. And so there is this, you know, positive negative kind of thing going on. Uh, this, you know, you can see that the, the colors that are being chosen at that for that particular curve are resulting in 
um, you know, what we're seeing here. So uh, maybe it's, a, you know, you know, out of the 100, it's, you know, later in the curve. I, I, I will look all of that up and try to you know, figure out what we've got uh, in there. But uh, it's just incredible. So one of the things that uh, I was interested in is, you know, what's happening up here in the corner. So I want to zoom in on that. And uh, this is just kind of extraordinary here, too. So you can see that there are many, uh, many crossing. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Go back. Uh, there are many, uh, you know, crossing patterns through here as well. It, it's, it's almost fractal in nature. Um, you know, we can zoom in on, you know, a particular area of that. And, uh, you know, just see some really beautiful things. Um, you know, and I was kind of interested in, you know, how are things working out here and it's looking pretty good. So, uh, you know, part of the, uh, the effort that, you know, Federico pointed out to me was to stay away from using NumPy as, uh, the, the generator of the plot values. And so now I'm just using SimPy to do that. And, uh, I'm specifying, you know, a number of divisions along the x-axis to, you know, sample our uh, our plot points. So uh, I, it's 1 2048th, so 1 2 to the 12th uh, that I've chosen for this, but we can change that scale and get finer and finer plots. I'll tell you, it took about an hour for it to generate this on my machine. Uh, so uh, it is uh, pretty uh, computationally uh, intensive, especially as the plot, or especially as the polynomials go into higher degrees. Um, you know, as a matter of fact, uh, let's just uh, take a look at uh, that uh, here. So um, this is the, the printout, and, you know, I was printing the polynomial as, uh, as you know, on each iteration. And, and look at the kind of patterns that are actually appearing here. Just from the length of these integers, look at the size of these integer coefficients. They're just absol absolutely incredible. I've never... And I'm amazed that SimPy can really kind of handle this effortlessly. It just takes compute time, but uh, it's it's getting it right, and the curves are showing up correctly. Um, so uh, it, it's it's pretty amazing. I'm 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 so blown away by it. Uh, and you know, I think one of the next steps will be to uh, try to find intersection points, as many as we can, you know, before we kind of get bogged down in the complexity of uh, being able to do that. Uh, I'd like to plot other key points for each of the curves, uh, their vertexes, and then add any of the x values for um, those key points into our sample set. So our curves will always kind of at least pass through uh, those points. Um, so like as you're seeing here, um, you know, the curves start to lose their resolution uh, as we zoom in, but you can still see it's you know it's pretty good. Uh, you know it's still getting in there pretty close. I'll uh, go one more level here, and uh, yeah, and and you can see where it's it's starting to fall apart. But uh, you know I think that that is easily correctable. And then you know when we get to a point where we want to you know create better pictures we'll spend time to render you know each of the frames at a higher resolution rate uh and i think that we can sequence uh some animations kind of panning and zooming across this you know uh and just taking the time to render each frame taking the snapshot and then just you know creating video content out of that so um it's it's just incredible i wanted to you know share it with you i i can't believe what this uh, tool is capable of doing just through this simple code. Um, just to give you a quick rundown, um, here is uh, you know, some of the code that um, Federico had shared with me that I began to actually apply to what I was already doing in the plotting that I was working on. But essentially it's just keeping everything algebraic all the way up to the very end of just casting um, the values to floats uh, so that um, our plotting engine can plot it and uh, it's just it's super interesting um, you know taking each expression and turning it into a function and then being able to apply that to create the, the list you know so for every x value in 
the list of x's, you know, run it through this function, and that creates a list of y's. And, uh, and that would be a list of y's as algebraic values, and then I cast those as floats. So we have an, you know, a list of x floats and a list of y floats, and they get plotted for each curve. So we're in this loop where we're just going through all the polynomials that we've generated, uh, you know, up, uh, up to 100 uh, to do that. And then uh, this is my, my solving uh, area, and this will be the next area to kind of expand a little bit and just see how far we can take. Actually, um, you know, finding as many you know, intersection points as we can yeah, in this will be a lot of fun. So uh, that is it for now. I think we'll, um, we'll call it there. Uh, this is Phi, and uh, with another update, uh, I will uh, update the code on GitHub for those of you who are interested. And uh, I think as I'm moving forward, I'll give some tutorials maybe on how to get set up to run this yourself. And, uh, you know, I can, uh, you know, explain how I have my system set up and, you know, and what you would need to be able to do this and run run Python and have all of the, you know, necessary packages uh, that are, um, uh, you know, kind of really providing the, the power behind all of this. You know, I'm just writing kind of simple scripts to orchestrate uh, all of this and um, and really grateful for uh, Federico's uh, help in clarifying a lot of things. And he was, he was pointing out, you know, some of these details, but, um, you know, we'll, we'll document a bit more and come back. And uh, so this is fine.